As I was praying about today's sermon, um, I just felt like the Lord telling me to set it aside and just to kind of speak from the heart today. So I wanted to speak to you all from the heart. So I'm going to set this down and we're just going to get into the scripture. But this morning, uh, what I wanted to share with you, Kelly and I have been uh, <clears throat> praying through our vision for Great Bridge Presbyterian Church. We had an amazing session retreat uh, a week ago. And at the session retreat, we were praying about um, you know, do we give a two-year vision? Do we give a five-year vision? Do we give a 10-year vision uh, for our, our goals and our hopes for Great Bridge Presbyterian Church? And we both felt that, especially in the age of COVID, uh, you know, it's kind of a fool's errand to come up with a five or 10-year plan because we don't know what the next six months are gonna look like or what the next year is gonna look like. I mean, today the, the team had a great discussion talking about Christmas Eve. And even then it's like, well, maybe we'll do this, maybe we'll do that, maybe the governor will allow us this, maybe the governor will allow us that. And so as we were praying about our vision, what came to mind is that we wanted to share not so much, we gave a one and a half year plan, we gave a plan for this year and, and all the way through next year. But then we said, you know, what do we want people to know about us philosophically? What do we want people to know about how we view ministry, about our vision for uh, you as a congregation, for us as your pastors, uh, for the staff and the session and the diaconate? Uh, what do we want people to come away with from their time under our spiritual leadership. And so that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're studying uh, from the book of Ephesians. We're talking about define. So if you wanna grab your Bible, we're in Ephesians chapter three. We've got it marked here. Ephesians chapter three, verses 14 through 21. So hear the word of the Lord. For this reason, I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with power through his spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. And I pray that you being rooted and established in love may have power together with all the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ and to know this love that surpasses knowledge that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more then all we ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Kelly, would you like Amen. to lead us in prayer? Absolutely. God, we just thank you for your word. We thank you for the power of your love. We thank you for the power of your word and the opportunity we have this morning to hear from you. So we welcome you wherever we are. We welcome you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Speak through Mike, and Lord, teach each one of us what you would have us hear from your word today. We pray all these things in your most powerful name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> so as we shared with Session, uh, we shared our vision a little bit, and it's a, the same vision we had shared with the staff a few weeks ago. And we said, in 10 years of ministry, the two core things that Kelly and I have begun to realize are foundational for our way of looking at the world, uh, there, are two, there are two key things to, to know about us. Um, one, we're charismatic. And by that, I don't mean that, you know, we, I know charismatic is a bad name at times, and I don't mean that, you know, when the cameras are off, we're sitting here handling snakes and nope. <laughs> throwing them up in the air, but it means that we trust and follow the leading of the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. you know, and so we encourage everybody under our authority spiritually to have that same attitude. You know, when uh, we studied Revelation, if you remember as our first Bible, as our first sermon series here at Great Bridge Presbyterian Church, and if you remember uh, John, when he addressed the letters in Revelation to the churches in Revelation, he addressed them to the angels of the churches at Sardis and at Smyrna and at Pergamum. And uh, we fully believe that, that, that the biblical model there is that each church has an angelic host that's representative of that church, that protects that church. And so we want to be in line with that host and with the Holy Spirit. You know, when the Holy Spirit says go left, we go left. When the Holy Spirit says go right, we go right. When the Holy Spirit says jump high, we jump high. When he says duck down low, uh, we duck down low. Um, and because of that, because we, everything that we do, we want to do it in prayer and we want to do it in discernment with the Holy Spirit. Sometimes we move really fast. You know, if the Spirit is prompting us and we're seeing good things and we say, we want to double down on what the Lord is doing here in this place. And sometimes we move slow. Sometimes we pull back and say, you know, I have a check in my spirit and I'm just not sure I feel comfortable moving in that way. And the corollary to that, so that's the first sort of foundational truth about who we are as pastors and how we want to lead. Um, and the second is that if we're in line with the Holy Spirit, if we're following in, 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 God's, in God's movement, uh, we expect great and mighty things. Mm -hmm. You know, when you are walking in, in, in the will of your heavenly father, 
God does big things in your life and he does big things through you. Um, and sometimes he does big things in spite of you, but we don't want that to be the case. We want it to be that God does big things because we are in line with his spirit. And so we shared that with the session. We said, we're, you know, we're charismatic, broadly speaking, mm -hmm. and we um, expect big and mighty things from our great and mighty God when we follow his will. And we shared with them that, you know, it's been tough in the pandemic, right? We're, we're still in a pastoral transition. We had uh, six months with you guys in person, getting to know you, getting to spend time with you, and then the pandemic hit, and uh, we had to worship from home for quite a while. We're back in services, but it still doesn't feel quite normal, you know, and we get that. Um, and so we know that we're still in a time of getting to know you and what drives us pastorally, what gets us up in the morning, it's that we would win people to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Everything that we do, every, every decision we make, every change, we do it with the core idea that we want to win as many people to Christ as possible. So the gospel should give you a sense of peace from the past, comfort in the present, and then hope for the future because your salvation is secured. A few years ago, when we were uh, in Arizona, um, Kelly got some really aggressive tumors, um, and they uh, continued to be very treatable. And of course, it, the success rate was like 99% on each of the courses of treatment. Invariably, after one treatment, the second treatment, the third treatment, they could, I'm getting a little <laughs> scary time. You know, she continued to not not respond, and eventually. Uh, the nurse oncologist called me, which I don't know why she called me. I, maybe she thought I was the strong one. She doesn't know <laughs> that you're the strong one. Uh, she called me and said, hey, I don't, think the experiment, I don't think the treatments are working. I think you need to look at some experimental treatments. And you need to think even about what if those experimental treatments don't work? You know, what, what would you want to do if you had a limited amount of time with Kelly? And so then I had to be the one to go and tell Kelly. We were sitting alone in our bed after we put the boys down to sleep and said, here's what she said. You know, what do you want to do? Do you want to, I, I think I said, do you want to go to Paris? Do you want to, you know, travel? Is there something you want to do? Do you have any regrets? And Kelly, the deep and abiding faith that she has said, no, I don't have any regrets. I'm, I'm going to keep on preaching the gospel. I want to keep, love you. She said, I want to keep on preaching the gospel. And friends, um, that was convicting for me. Uh, I was thinking about regrets I had. I was thinking about mistakes I'd made things that I wish I'd done differently. And here was my, you know, saint of a wife, my partner and, and best friend and colleague in ministry. And she was saying, I don't have any regrets. I'm going to keep on preaching the gospel until I can't. And I have to tell you that that conversation led to a life change in us. And it led to us being here. It led to us taking this call. Because I got to tell you that a couple, three or four years ago, if someone had called us from Virginia and said, hey, we're from Virginia, we would be like, let me know when you guys move to the Northern California Bay Area and we'll be in touch. Um, but after that, after she got healed, we said, okay, God's doing a big thing in our life and he has spared my wife and he has spared our ministry together. And so we're going to be bold and we're going to step out faithfully and, and without reservation or hesitation or fear because we want to do big things. And that's why we came here. Um, like I said, the first thing is we move with the Holy Spirit. That's what you need to know about us. That's, that's what defines our leadership. And then two, we expect big things. We didn't come out here just to play a long game, just to, just to hang out and, and ride out of retirement and, and be here for, for 20 or 30 years. I mean, we plan on being here for 20 or 30 years, and we do plan on retiring <laughs> out of this church. <laughs> but guys, we came out here because we want to win thousands of people to Christ, and we want to do it with you. And we can't do it without you. Okay, I, Kelly and I can't be, in our first call, I, and I love this person, and they're with the Lord now, so I can definitely share this story. <laughs> our first call, uh, we had this lovely, lovely gentleman, uh, I won't say his name, because uh, I know a lot of our friends watch, and we were talking about evangelism, and he said, I have a great idea. You know, what if we get some of those sandwich boards? And I was like, oh, interesting, you guys want to go out and carry out sandwich boards? And he said, no, no, no. What if you and Kelly stand outside with sandwich boards in front of the church, and, and that's how we do evangelism? And, you know, I, I thought, and I prayed, and I said, you know, I'm, I'm open to it, I'm not sure that's maybe the best use of our kind of time and energy and resources. Um, but it was an illuminating moment for me because, you guys, uh, we are not going to be the best evangelists. Okay, all we can do is give you meaningful opportunities to connect at a heart level with Jesus Christ. But you guys are the evangelists. You guys are the ones who get out there. God has given you stewardship over friendships, over business relationships, over workplace relationships. He's given you long-term, deep heart relationships with people who could hear Christ's truth if you speak it to them. And so it's our job to present the gospel to you, 
to pray that you will accept it, not just up here in your head, but in your heart that you'll accept it. And then it's our job to equip you guys out of that heart knowledge to go out and win others to Jesus Christ. If you want to know our vision for a Great Bridge Presbyterian Church, it's that you would come to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ and that you would take that and go out and win others to a saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. I want thousands of people in our area to come to know Jesus Christ because of what we're doing here. And more importantly, because of what you're doing there, whether you're on your couch, wherever you're watching this, wherever you're seeing that, I want, I want you to come to saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And then I want you to share that with others. We had this amazing dinner with uh, friends of ours that are missionaries in Papua, Indonesia. And uh, they were, he was a fraternity brother of mine, knew Kelly and I really well. She was the president of the sister sorority. And he had dinner with us in Arizona a couple years ago. And he said, you guys, it is so neat to see God's call on your life and to see how much you've changed. Because it's only out of that heart knowledge and, and that heart relationship with Jesus Christ that we're going to be able to do anything. We need to move with the Spirit when the Spirit leads. You know, that's what the Apostle Paul is talking about when he's talking about being defined. He's, he's not talking about somebody who understood in their head that they were saved by Jesus Christ. He's talking about somebody who understood in their heart the height and the depth and the width and the extreme majesty and amazing power of Jesus Christ to transform lives and not just lives, to transform generations, okay? Because when, when you make a heart conversion, you're, you're setting a, a model for you, for your family, for your friends, and they're watching you. They're seeing if your life looks different. They're seeing what you have. And when your life looks different, when you have that sanctification, when the Holy Spirit is changing you, like they're gonna want a piece of that. And that's our job to bring that gospel to you. You're gonna hear it a lot, you know, not just special services. That's our job. Our job is to bring the gospel. Your job is to respond, to hear that. Get out of here, even though here's good, but get into here, get that message into here, and then go out and share the love of Christ with others. That is our vision for this church. It's why we came to this church. We want to win others to Jesus Christ. And anything else apart from that is a total distraction. Frankly, sometimes it's an idol. You know, if, if, we, if our worship is constricted by, by focusing on things that are not essential, then, then we're missing the boat, you know? And, and it's a heart issue, first and foremost, right? Like, we all have disagreements. Changes are difficult. Changes are hard. I know Kelly and I have made changes, and some of them have been well-received, and others of them haven't been, and we're always open for feedback. We're here. You know, we care about you guys. You can always set up a meeting with us. Um, although I will say, like, feedback doesn't necessarily mean we'll change our opinions. It, it just means that we'll listen and hear, you know, and, and, and pray about it and discern and, and continue discerning, you know, in cons consultation with the session and, you know, other trusted, you know, people in our lives. But um, we want you guys to focus on the heart issue. I want you all to come to that saving heart knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I'm excited about what we're doing here. Kelly's excited about what we're doing here. We want to win people to Jesus Christ, and we want you to be a part of it. And not just a part of it, I want you to be enthusiastic about it. I want you to be pumped and through, it's funny, so we have some staff members raising their hands right now in the background. I want you to be enthusiastic about it. I want this, I, the way that Kelly and I get up in the morning and, and hit the ground, and listen, there are plenty of days we don't hit the ground running and we're frustrated or tired or bitter or didn't sleep well or you know, all those things, but our better days, when we hit the ground running and we go, what am I gonna do for the kingdom today? How am I gonna impact the kingdom? That's the experience I want you to have at Great Bridge Presbyterian Church. It's the experience that we're praying for you for and it's the, the prayer that Paul had for the Ephesians, and it still applies to us today. Be defined, be grounded, be rooted in who Jesus Christ is, and have that knowledge transform your life. Because, and Paul ends his prayer, right, with this, this beautiful thing. He says, because if we do that, to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or imagine according to his power that is at work within us, to him, to Jesus Christ, be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. So we do it all for God's glory, we want to give him all the glory, and we want you to join and partner with us. Kelly, would you bring us home with a, a prayer um, that just really invites, allows people to invite, invite Jesus into their heart, whether it's for the first time or for the thousandth? Let's pray. Our great God, we come before you, and we acknowledge that we are sinners. Lord, we are in need of your grace. We are in need of your saving work in our lives. Lord, to save us from ourselves to save us from God, maybe even generations of darkness and difficulty that Lord, you bring us into your light. So we confess today that you are Lord. We confess with our mouths and we believe in our hearts that you are Lord. And Paul tells us in Romans that when we do that, 
we are saved. So for those, whoever is watching right now, if you have prayed that prayer, you have entered into the eternal family, into the eternal kingdom. If you needed to recommit this morning, may, God's, uh, may God open your eyes and your ears to hear him and see him in a new and powerful way. And we pray these words over our church family, over our leadership, over all those who encounter Great Bridge Presbyterian Church in any way or form, that Lord, they may confess with their mouths and believe in their hearts that Jesus Christ is Lord mm -hmm. to the glory of God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit throughout all generations forever and ever. Amen. Amen. You want to bring us home with a little charge? I think you've, I think you've done it. Well, listen, uh, we are so thankful for, uh, yeah, sometimes you don't need I don't a charge know what else to say. and a blessing. We are so thankful for your time together. Uh, we, it's a real pleasure to uh, be welcomed into your home and know that we're praying for you. We're here for you. We are available to talk with you about any heart decisions mm -hmm. and we're eagerly expecting God to do mighty things. So stay in his spirit and receive this benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be, be with, with you all, all now and, and forevermore. forevermore. Amen. Amen. Bye.